very good morning, everyone. And uh, we welcome you to our Holy Communion service for the fourth Sunday of uh, Easter. Shall we all stand? We shall have a short prayer. Our Father in heaven, we come into your holy presence this morning. We thank you for your grace in all our doings in the week that has gone by. You remind us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. For you are a great God and do many marvelous deeds. This morning, we ask that you open our hearts, open our minds, that we may receive your precious word. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. We say the collect of purity, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, hymn number 293, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Me, O great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me now and evermore. the healing stream dot flow let the fire and cloudy pillar lead me all my journey through strong deliver strong deliver be the mouth in the star. be the will my strength and shield Tread the verge of Jordan, beat my anxious fears up, sir. Bear me through the swelling current, let me save on cannon, sir. Songs of praises, songs of praises. The collect for Easter 4, Almighty God, who alone can bring order to the unruly wills and passion of sinful men, give us grace to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that in all the changes and chances of this world, our hearts may surely be, be there to fix where lasting joys are to be found through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. The reading today is taken from the book of Proverbs, chapter 31. Reading from verses 10 to the end. Proverbs, chapter 31. Reading from verses 10 to the end. A wife of noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. 
She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servants' girls. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamb does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the staff, holds the distaff and grabs the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hand to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes covering for her bed. She is clothed in the fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected in the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchant with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned, and let her work. Bring her praise at the city gates. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this morning. We thank you for your holy presence with us, guide us in the understanding of your word, and bless our time here together. We ask, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, good morning. And... Uh, Blessed Mother Day, Mother Day to every mother is present. Technically, actually, uh, when we speak, we don't, uh, we don't need to wear the mask, but I think the mic will wear the mask. La. <laughs> so, that, <laughs> so that's why we have this disposable uh, cover, so that uh, now actually uh, you can uh, maybe speak without wearing the mask. Right, uh, right. Today, of course, is Mother's Day, and uh, the reading just now read on... Uh, the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 31, 31. I want to uh, talk a little bit of this context, okay? Uh, especially, uh, I don't want the, uh, the men or the, those who are not mothers to get a uh, fifth left out, actually. Uh, so this message only for Mother's Day and, oh, I'm not a mother, so it doesn't apply to me. Uh, no, actually, I don't think it applies to everyone, but the, uh, the context is zoom on mothers because today is Mother's Day. But primarily, I want to say that the book of Proverbs, uh, if you are, I hope you have read it. Uh, you have not. This book of Proverbs, of course, uh, is uh, is wise saying. It's called a wise saying. Okay, and chapter thirty-one is the last chapter of the book of Proverbs. And the book of Proverbs is not not uh, uh, an easy book to uh, understand. Certain things you don't understand. Why, why the uh, uh, why you say like that? You see, so because the context and also the culture as well as the. Uh, the, the things is uh, a, a bit different. Okay, we are separated from uh, a few thousand years. The book of Proverbs was uh, attributed to Solomon, so King Solomon. Okay, and King Solomon, of course, uh, the son of King David, is uh, a thousand years before the Lord Jesus Christ, making it something like three thousand years. <laughs> so uh, it is not easy to understand uh, that kind of. Uh, 
uh, context, uh, 3,000 years. But don't talk about 3,000 years. Now in this fast pace of society, 30 years is a long time, <laughs> isn't it? 30 years is a very long time in a new generation. I think uh, if, you are, if you are young, and uh, 30 years ago is like a thousand years ago <laughs> with the technology, even with the, uh, all kinds of new, uh, new gadgets. So 30 years is a long time. But here we're looking at 3,000 3, years uh, difference. But of course, this, uh, the, the book of Proverbs uh, it is uh, called also the uh, book of wisdom or called the wisdom literature by the Jews. The Jews refer to the literature, of course. Uh, Proverbs is not the only book. It's uh, known as a book of literature, of wisdom. Rather that uh, Psalms, Ecclesiastes is also, the, the, they call it the wisdom literature. It focuses on how to be wise, how to and live uh, wisely, wisely. Okay, that's important. If you look at Proverbs chapter 1, chapter 1, uh, if you uh, turn to chapter 1, uh, Proverbs, here uh, it's interesting. Uh, maybe you look at verse 20 to 22 as the introduction. Okay, here I just very quickly I read it. Verse 20 of Proverbs chapter 1 says, Wisdom cries out in the streets, in the marketplace. She raised her voice, the head of the noisy streets, she cried out, cried out at the entrance of the city gate. She said, How long, O simple one, will you love being simple? How long, O scoffer, delight in the scoffing? Fools hate knowledge. So here, wisdom. Wisdom is calling out. No? And then uh, we, we, we use the word, the, uh, the, wis- the idea of wisdom is personified as a, a, a lady, a woman. Okay? So it's shown as the, uh, like a lady. Of course, in, in the original Hebrew, uh, it is, wisdom is a feminine noun. Feminine noun. Okay? So here, wisdom is calling out. It's just a lady calling people to be wise. Of course, here refer to the people of God, the Jews. Okay? So that is uh, the, the, uh, the understanding. Uh, wisdom has a lady. So therefore, it is very fitting. At the end of the book of uh, Proverbs, here you have an idea, or rather the tribute uh, to, to wisdom, but she is, or rather wisdom is personified as a, a lady. Okay? But I'll talk more afterward. I'll talk more about it, okay? But here, very important, the whole uh, idea of the book of Proverbs is to call the reader to have wisdom, to have wisdom. Uh, again, uh, if you look at the book of uh, Proverbs, verse 1, uh, starting with verse 1, it says, The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction is to understand words of insight, receive instruction, is wise, in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity. And they give uh, prudence. So it tells you, tells you about why it's so important. Okay? And then in verse 8, very interesting, verse 8 of Proverbs chapter 1, it says, Hear, my son, your father's instruction, forsake not your mother's teaching, for they are graceful garland to, uh, for your head and pendants for your neck. So uh, it's, it, the father and mother, okay, uh, instruction is, is very, very important. Uh, and their wisdom to you, to what? To the person, to the person. So here, uh, it, it, it is uh, it's calling people to have wisdom. And what is wisdom according to the Bible? The fear of the Lord, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge or wisdom. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Okay, I just want to uh, just take note. Every time you read the Old Testament, uh, they have the, the one idea, but it is repeated in a different Different style, okay? But the same thing, okay? Just like it says, Hear my son, your, fa- uh, your father's instruction, forsake not your mother teaching. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Hear instruction from your parents, that technically, it's the same thing. And uh, uh, that's why it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom or knowledge. Full despise. Wisdom and instruction is the same thought, but is repeated in the uh, different ways. So this is uh, how the, uh, the Old Testament, especially the book of Proverbs, uh, it's shown, it's shown. So don't, don't get confused. Sometimes they repeated the idea, but that is how the style is. They say one point, but it is repeated in a different format. Right, okay. Having that very important, verse 7, is the fear of the Lord. It's the beginning of knowledge or wisdom. So here, even in, in, in uh, the end of the chapter, verse, chapter 31, 
we also have this thought repeated, okay? Like the verse 30 of 31, charm is deceitful, beauty is in vain, but the woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. So here, the fear of the Lord is repeated, okay? Repeated. It's so important, uh, so important to, to fear God because when we fear God, it is the start of having wisdom. And also, uh, the book of Proverbs also reminded the rich listeners to, to honor your father and mother, just like in the, uh, the book of Exodus, the Ten Commandments, honor your father and mother, that you may live long. Okay? And uh, here, the Ten Commandments, in this, uh, rather, honoring your father and mother, is the uh, only commandment from the Ten Commandments, it comes with a blessing. All God's commandments, of course, it comes with a blessing. But the Ten Commandments tell you what to do. But honor a father, it comes with a blessing. Okay? So I want, I want to set the whole context so that we see the big picture of uh, this uh, chapter 31 of the book of Proverbs. But of course, this morning, uh, being Mother's Day, I just want to zoom on that particular passage in context with uh, with mother, mother, okay, with mother. Come, let us uh, turn to our text for today, Proverbs thirty-one, looking at verses ten to thirty-one. Ten to thirty-one. Very quickly, I just want to uh, want to say, okay, verse ten it says here, a wife of noble character who can find, she is worth more, far more than rubies. Right, uh, I just want to just talk about the word noble, okay, the word noble in. Uh, NIV, the New International Translation, might not show the true effect. Okay, because in the King James, King James, it talk about the virtuous, a virtuous, uh, a wife of virtuous character who can find the virtuous. Okay, but if you look at the original word of the Hebrew, it uh, the word of course is hayil, 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 c h a. Y I L C H is uh, the hard H. Hayel, what does it mean? It it's uh it comes from the, the idea of having strength and power, strength and power, and it is a uh, it is a military word no, in the Bible. It talk about men of great strength and great power. Okay, soldiers of great strength, men of God who fight against the enemy. So they they uses this kind of uh, word that describe this. Okay. That, that is how. So what does it mean? It means that a woman of strength, who can find, basically. That's why my uh, title topic for, or rather theme for today, the, uh, is a woman of great strength. A woman of strength, is it? So mother, indeed, a mother is a, a person, or uh, rather a woman of great strength and power. I'll talk a bit more on it. So how true it is a mother exhibit such strength? But here, I'm not talking about physical strength, definitely. Huh? Uh, I'm not talking about physical strength, that the mother is so strong and can carry uh, <laughs> lots of things. That, that's no idea. But rather, we are looking at the inner strength, okay? looking at the emotional, even the psychological area. Okay? And uh, generally, generally, women, uh, science tells us, uh, are stronger than men. <laughs> not uh, physically, maybe, but maybe some physically, but more on the uh, inner strength, emotional, psychological, okay? And that is, uh, that is uh, the understanding, okay? That's understanding that, uh, in fact, a woman is stronger than men. Of course, uh, some men will disagree with me. You can talk about it later. But nevertheless, that is the idea. That's why the Bible is very clear, indeed. Uh, this uh, lady, she is uh, a, fourth, a wife and a mother as well. And she is uh, both more than rubies, precious stone. She's very, very what we call, uh, very, yeah, the, the value is very high. La. <laughs> then it says, uh, so here, yeah, the, 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 the book of Proverbs say, uh, this, this lady is far more worth than rubies, far more worth than rubies. How true it is, someone asks, how, how much worth is a mother or a stay-at-home mother, la. How, how, how is it worth? So uh, there are certain people in, uh, in the world, they have uh, maybe lot of, lots of time. Uh. <laughs> There's one uh, website in the US called uh, salary.com. 
salary.com. Uh. See how much a person worth, huh? So the calculate, the calculate, how much a, a mother worth or stay at home worth. They did this survey uh, before the pandemic, uh, 2019. Uh. They two zero, so uh, according to the website, salary.com, in 2019, they say that the, uh, they found, uh, they found uh, that the uh, worth of a uh, stay at home mom, uh, okay, stay at home mom, that when she doesn't go to work, she is worth one hundred and seventy-eight thousand. One seventy-eight thousand. That's what she's worth, uh. and that is not in ringgit, of course. Sally.com <laughs> is the U.S. website. That is in U.S. dollars, uh. U.S. dollars. Okay, that is their calculation. Of course, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that you agree or disagree. The whole idea is that uh, it is, uh, yeah. A stay-at-home mom contribute a lot to the family as well. And uh, although technically she doesn't contribute to the society economically, but nevertheless, she is, uh, she's worth a great deal. Okay? It's a great deal. And that's how they, they what we call, they treat her. She is, uh, and certainly uh, that, uh, that understanding tells us that the mother is not... Uh, only a blessing, but especially to the family. She's a blessing to the children and also to the husband. You see? And in fact, verses 11 and 12 tell us indeed uh, how blessed is the father, the husband, as well as the children. Okay? Right, let us come back more. We we'll, we'll look at verses 13 and 9 to 19. It tells us more about this person, about the wife and the mother. And verses especially... 13 to 15. 13 to 15, of course, tell us, I'm not going to repeat about this. I think you have read it. It tells us how diligent, hardworking the mother is. Uh, how, and certainly, uh, you, we will agree that the mother's work is never done. <laughs> the mother's always busy, uh, especially uh, with the children. And uh, that is uh, sometimes no end. No end to the mother's work. But very uh, unfortunately, that most, most people do not see the actual work done by a mother, isn't it? It's at home, nobody knows. You see, someone said a uh, very uh, interesting, uh, what is housework? Housework. Uh, housework is a job that when you do it, nobody knows. But when you don't do it, Everybody know. <laughs> yes, it's true. Everybody know. Oh, why are the floors not swept? Why are the uh, uh, plates are not washed? <laughs> and why uh, it's so dirty here? <laughs> but you do it, nobody know. Yeah, yeah. You wash the plate, huh? you sweep the floor. <laughs> so that is, uh, they, they, they describe housework, something that <laughs> when it's done, nobody know. When not done, everybody know about it. So what I'm saying is, yeah, certainly a mother work is never, never done. Just, uh, she's not only a, hardworking person, but here the Proverbs also tell us how wise she is and she managed the finance of the house, you see. And uh, of course, uh, we know that in, in real life, everyone has limited money to spend. Of course, there are the 1% or 0.1% who are unlimited money to spend. They are, of course, uh, they don't worry about uh, money. I think uh, most of us belongs to that 99.9%. Uh, we, we have limited financial resources. And here, Book of Proust tells how the, the, the lady, okay, how the woman and mother as well, she managed the resources well, financial resources in it. And uh, suddenly, uh, she needs to be wise. Especially uh, stay at home mom when you cook and with the rising price of the food, you have uh, to come up with miracles. Uh, and uh, indeed, that's how uh, wonderful and uh, wise a mother, a stay-at-home mom is, you see. Verse 17, verse 17, of course, remind us about her strength. Verse 17, she sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. Basically, uh, we're looking at even talking about the physical strength the mother has. So basically, from uh, verses 13 to even 17, the, uh, this passage tells us about how hardworking, how strong even, and how wise uh, this, uh, this 
Mother Isla, and this woman Isla, okay? But I want to look at verse 20. Verse, she's not only uh, wise, strong, and diligent, uh, hardworking, but she is also have a compassionate heart for those who are in need. She opened, verse 20, she opens her arms to the poor, extends her hands to the needy. Uh, same thought, it repeated. Open the arms to the poor, extend to the hands to the needy. Of course, thank us how compassionate and how uh, caring uh, this woman is. And, and this is very, what we call, this is very fitting, okay, for, for the mother. Because, very interesting, if you again look at the Hebrew word, the Hebrew word from compassion comes from the same word as the womb, W. O M B a woman. And that is the same root word for Hebrew for compassion. Technically the, the understanding, the understanding of the Jewish people that compassion comes from that that so organ of a person. And what did they say? So so it's natural. It's natural for women or for mother to be compassionate, to show mercy. That's how it technically says uh, and uh, generally uh, definitely women uh, are more compassionate than men. Uh. That is the understanding. Uh. Okay, and men don't fully understand compassion and mercy. Okay, we move on to verses 21 to 25. Uh, it tells us about this uh, woman. He plans for the future, isn't it? She plans for the future. Okay, and that's, uh, that's, uh, that's important. And uh, of course, not only her future, but also the family, the future of the family. In fact, uh, here, verse 23 her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. Technically, he, so rather, the husband's uh, success is influenced by his wife, his wife. Someone once said, Behind every successful man, there is a strong woman. Behind every successful man, there is a strong woman. I don't know whether you agree with that. No? Some agree, some don't agree. No? But actually, you ask me, I don't agree. Why? Because I said, behind every successful man, there are two strong women, two persons. One is the mother, the other is the wife. <laughs> so there's not only one, but there are two. But here also, it tells us, it tells us about this, this lady. She is a person that is not only thing for the future, he prepared for the future. Okay? See, she is clothed with verse 25. She is clothed with strength. Dignity and she can laugh of the days to come. Laugh, uh, but careful, the word laugh doesn't mean he's making a joke of uh, fun, fun. Uh. Strength and honor are her clothing and she rejoiced in time to come. That is the King James Version. So she rejoiced in the time to come. She is not fearful on the future because she had prepared for the future. So she's not only wise, hardworking, taking care of family, but she looks ahead. Ahead, huh? Of the, uh, the 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 future as well, so indeed uh, she, in that certain sense uh, she's like the ideal, or she is indeed the like a superwoman. Uh. What's thirty tell us? Tell us about what? Tell us about that uh, that secret. What is the secret of this uh, woman? Okay, charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. So here, of course, remind, remind us the beauty of a mother, of course, is not external or not just external, but rather it is more an internal and it is eternal. It, it won't go away. You know. Why? External beauty is temporal, temporal. But the beauty or uh, the inner beauty is, uh, is not, it's internal, but it's also forever. It doesn't go away. Okay. And of course, the Bible is very clear. Uh, that she's able to do all this, not by her own strength, because she has wisdom, because she feared the Lord. Proverbs tell us the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, knowledge. Same thing. And she fears the Lord. That's why she's able to do all things. She has the wisdom of God. And wisdom begins by fearing the Lord. Verse 7, the remind us. When we talk about the word fear, fear, fear of God especially, yeah, the word fear of God is a 
a little bit of explanation. Uh. We are called to fear God, actually. You know. But how does it work? What does it mean to fear God? Okay? To fear God, actually, it denotes what we call a, a relationship. It's not talking about that kind of uh, emotion. You fear somebody because this person can do you harm. No? Yeah, you fear your, uh, they fear the, your neighbor, you know, because the neighbor uh, certainly uh, belongs to the secret society. You know? <laughs> so uh, you, you don't want your neighbor come and sort of do harm for you, maybe. Yeah? It's that kind of fear. But it is, uh, it is more than that. When you talk about the fear of God, you talk about the, yeah, you're talking about more than just uh, physical fear, uh, but it is a positive fear. Positive fear telling uh, us how great God is, you know. God is, of course, powerful. How God is sovereign, and God uh, sort of executes judgment, okay? See, uh, we, we means a society, uh, the society nowadays, uh, not like the society about 100, 200 years ago. I'm talking about a society uh, a few hundred years ago. They fear God. Lah. Generally, lah. generally, I'm not talking about European society. I'm talking about the society in general uh, are more fearful of the great power. Lah. Now, nowadays, we don't. Lah. Maybe because uh, of, the, of the great uh, knowledge and enlightenment. So people don't. Don't care about God. Don't talk about fear. People don't even believe in God. Don't care about God. And uh, there's no fear of God. You just do what you want to do. Those days, they don't do what they don't do what they want to do. They, they know if they do wrongly, there is a consequences. Not just the Christian faith. No. I'm talking about other faith. I'm sure you have heard of the word karma. K-R-M-A. Karma. You, know, you do bad things, you receive your karma. No. Bad things they will come back to you. And that is the fear of the the, uh, the, uh, the great God, uh, in a certain sense. Uh. But here the people don't. Here don't. So we are called to fear God. Okay? We are called to fear God. And that is the secret of this uh, um, lady, who is both a mother and a wife as well. Okay? Because she feared God. She feared God. Okay? Uh, she had a relationship with God. Very important. She had a relationship with God. And she know God is the one who is take care of all things. She's able. She's wise because she got wisdom from God. She has strength because she derives strength from God. And many things as well. So at the end of the chapter of Proverbs 31, what does it tell us? What are we called to do? Very simple. Verse 31, NIV version, uh, called, Honor her for all her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. King's version. Give her the fruits of her hand, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Honor her or give her the. Uh, it tells us, us to, to give her what she had due. Uh, she, yeah, she has, it's a great woman. She had done great things. And we are called to, to give that honor and respect to her. To her okay? And it is a commandment, no? The, uh, it is a commandment, it's an imperative. Uh, it's not just, it's not a suggestion, not even an opinion, no? Yeah, yeah, we should give her honor, uh, opinion or uh, suggestion. It is a commandment from the Bible. Okay, you read the, the original text, it is a, a commandment and we are called to give honor and respect to this uh, person who is a mother and a wife as well. And today we are looking at Mother's Day and indeed uh, we are glad, we are glad uh, the, uh, the church in that respect uh, pays honor, tribute to all mothers. And here, uh, there is no need to do much. Why? The Bible tells us, let her works bring her praise. We... we we don't need to do much because of what she had done. It already uh, a testimony, a testimony in the at city gate. City gate is a very important place. No? Uh, here we don't have city gate. Uh, uh, but city gate, those were the days you sit at the city, everybody who comes to the city will notice you. Okay? That is the main, uh, main entrance to the city. You cannot go to the city. There's, there's only one gate, la, technically. La. Or maybe there are other gates, la, but the one particular gate that every per, uh, people have to pass through this gate. For safety, la, those were the days in the sunset. No? Uh, those were the days people live in a very enclosed area. You have the enemies come, no? so you have probably one being entered so that everybody come by that. You can, you can control it. Uh, control it so that uh, your enemy come, uh, you can close the city gate and defend yourself. So he said, yeah, let the works praise her. Bring a praise at the city gate, the main gate. Everybody come. Everybody know. Give 
let, let, let everybody know because we don't need to do much because her testimony alone, people know. People know. Uh, that is how great she is. How great she is. Uh. Uh, she, she, uh, her works is a testimony. So, friends, I want to uh, just want to conclude here. I want to apply here. Okay? Apply here. So, we, we know that the last, the final book of the book of Proverbs lists down all these great qualities of uh, a woman. She is both uh, a wife and a mother. Of course, in the biggest context, it's talk about wisdom. But in the narrow context, it's zoom in on a lady, a woman, a wife and a mother. And that's what I want to focus on. And then, indeed, she is uh, a great person. And today, uh, once again, I think the church wants to pay tribute to all mothers here. And we are grateful. We are grateful. We praise God for the work of a mother to the family. And indeed, it is uh, indeed a commandment from the Bible to, to honor our mothers, to follow the example. But in a way, in a way, we are called to be like a mother. Okay, to be like a mother. And uh, this morning, we not only pay tribute to all biological mother, we also pay tribute to all who act like a mother, to the, the godmothers, to the foster mothers, and to those who are mothers, okay, uh, to children not even their own, but their mother. Even uh, the Apostle Paul mentioned this idea in First Thessalonians. What did Paul say? Paul said that we are like, Paul says in First Thessalonians chapter 2, looking at verses, verse 7b, B, yeah, the second part. Paul says that just like a nursing mother cares for children, we care for you because we love you so much. We're delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our life as well. Paul uses that example of a mother, a nursing mother. That we, are, we are like her, okay? And share not only the gospel, the what we have, but our life as well. And in the same way, uh, mothers share not only, of course, the love, but mothers also share the life with the child as well. Share her life with the child. So that is uh, how, how great and, of course, thankful we are for all mothers. And indeed, we thank uh, God, especially for the mother. And uh, uh, my, uh, my appeal for, for everyone is to continue to pray for your own mothers. You continue to pray for the strength of every mother. Indeed, this strength is not only, perhaps not only physical strength, but also inner strength. And not only that, but especially wisdom from God. We are all called, in a, in a way, we are called to, to have wisdom. From God, and we are repeated not just in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, especially in the book of James. The book of James says that we are called to to have wisdom. Verse, James chapter one, verse five. If anyone lack wisdom, he should ask from God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Basically, we are all called to have wisdom in anything that we do. And wisdom is best personified like a lady calling out, how long are you going to be simple? How long are you remain being simple? So once again, friends, church, let us give thanks for all the uh, mothers in church. Especially give thanks to your mother who have uh, done greatly so much. And let us continue to pray for all mothers to continue to have that inner strength, continue to have the wisdom, and also pray for ourselves. We too will have that wisdom that is given by God. Okay. Wisdom is highly prized, isn't it? Uh, much more than intelligence. intelligence. Perhaps well, one, one day I will preach on wisdom. Okay, preach on wisdom. Unfortunately now, we, in the society now, we focus more on intelligence, IQ more than wisdom. I'm not saying IQ is not important. Huh? We, we need certain kind of intelligence huh? to perform tasks. Huh? But more, more important, uh, as a church, as a human being, in general, we are called to have wisdom in everything that we do. We are called to be wise. Not just now, but much more. Back in the Old Testament, thousand years back, wisdom is calling. And indeed, we praise God. Indeed, wisdom is... Depicted, depicted or rather personified as a woman 
as a lady and has a wife and a mother as well. So my question for you to reflect today is, how often do we honour, respect our mother? Second question, do we fear God? As it is mentioned in the book of Proverbs. And do we have that wisdom that, co- that is also mentioned in the book of Proverbs? Come, let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for Mother's Day. Once again, we want to bless all the mothers here. We thank you for the book of Proverbs, the end, the last chapter of the book of Proverbs, who give a picture of a great woman, a mother and a wife, who is indeed a blessing to the family, to the children, to the husband, and also a blessing to the society. Once again, Lord, we commit ourselves in loving hands, Lord. Indeed, help us, each one of us, truly to be like a mother. They have this compassion and mercy to those around us. Indeed, grant us the wisdom. Indeed, the honor, the respect, our mother. We ask, we pray, we give thanks in Jesus' precious and wonderful name. Amen. God bless you. We will continue with our worship. Congregation, please stand. We shall reaffirm our faith and trust in uh, our Lord Jesus Christ by saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. To Him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, He rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, His worship and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father God, we are privileged to gather together in your name to worship, praise you and magnify your holy name. We are especially joyful that today is Mother's Day. Thank you for granting us mothers, grandmothers and even spiritual mothers who have nurtured and guided us through our life's journey. We ask that you bless and protect all our mothers and grant them good health and the joy of your salvation. Lord, we also want to bring before you our country, Malaysia. We ask that you grant our rulers your wisdom to govern this land. Help them to ensure justice, fairness, integrity and harmony. Let there also be political stability in this country, respect for one another, and continued freedom of worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also want to bring before you the church in Malaysia. We humbly ask that you grant wisdom and understanding to our church leaders, especially our bishops and clergy, that they might shepherd your flocks faithfully and extend your kingdom in this nation.
Father, we also remember our church members and their families. Bless and protect them always. We especially pray for all those who are celebrating their birthdays. Tan Sri Hong, Peggy C, Joanna Bates, and Alice Lee. May you be with them always and may they experience your love and joy. We also bring before you all those who are sick. May you touch and heal Kwa Chai Luan, Kwa Eng Huat, Li Yong Chiu, Chi Sin Hao, and Joanne Ham. Let them know that you are the God that careth for them, no matter the circumstances. And for our parish, Lord, we pray that you help us find the right evangelist for our church, someone who has the passion and zeal to serve you and your people. Last but not least, Lord, we ask that you bring an end to the conflict um, in, in Ukraine. Lord, bring healing and peace to this nation of Ukraine. Strengthen the faith of your children there and be their mighty fortress in this time of trouble. In Christ's most precious name, we ask and pray. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from all our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us all to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all people. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive, forgive us, us all that is past and, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. Of life. To, the to the glory of, of your, your name. name. Amen. 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 the God who forgive all through repent of mercy upon you, pardon, deliver you from all your sins, confirm, and strengthen in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us stand for the peace. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we are baptized to the one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We will share this peace with one another. We sing our overtree hymn, hymn number 134.
The offertory prayer we will say together. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, splendor, and, and the majesty. majesty. For everything, everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All, all things, things come, come from, from you, and of your, your own do we give you. to you. Amen. Blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your mind in the knowledge and love of God and of Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Right before we uh, have the announcement, uh, we will just bless the uh, Mother's Day gift. And I heard that it's also uh, a cake. Uh, okay. Right. Uh, we will uh, let's pray and uh, we. Right. Uh, okay. The cake is ready. Uh? Yeah. Okay. We we bless and uh, the Mother's Day gift us. Then we we'll bless the cake. And I think we want to invite all the mothers to come forward. And say a special blessing for all the mothers, and then only we will have the in the announcement. Okay, I mean, may I invite all the mothers to stand up, all the mothers to stand up. Uh, yeah, just stand up first where you are. You bless the gift and uh, you bless the gift, then, then you come out later. Okay, I just encourage all the mothers to stand up. Uh, please stand up. Uh, you pray, pray for the gift here and also pray for all mothers. Let's pray. Father, we thank, thank you all uh, the mothers present here. We thank you for all mothers, Lord, in church, Lord, and everywhere. We want to bless all the mothers, Lord. We thank you for the gift that's prepared for the mothers. Lord, bless this gift. Indeed, this gift is a symbol of the church, uh, of honor and paying tribute to all mothers for their sacrifices, for their commitment to the family, and indeed for all their services to the family. Lord, we want to commit each and every uh, mother that's standing here to Lord. We want to bless them and the family. We can uphold all the mothers, Lord, truly that you continue to grant them good health, long life, the peace, the love, the joy continue to be with them. Your holy presence continue to strengthen them, grant them indeed the inner strength and grant them wisdom in handling the family. Father God, also we pray for their work and indeed their continued to a blessing of the family. Lord, we also pray for protection that your holy angels watches them, watches the family. And truly, Lord, uh, every mother that's standing here, Lord, truly to be a blessing to the family, their blessing to the neighbor, their blessing to the community. And certainly, Lord, they continue to exercise this motherly heart, the care and compassion to everyone that they meet. And truly, uh, Christ is present and seen in their life. All this we pray and give thanks in Jesus' precious, wonderful name. When I bless the mother, the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Right, uh, we yeah, invite all the masters, uh, mother to come. <laughs> yeah. And uh, maybe uh, somebody said take a picture, is it? Somebody said take a photo. Uh, of the mother present here and uh, yeah. Take a photo and uh, yeah. Yeah, sorry? Okay, yeah. Uh, Patrick will uh, help us to take a photo of the mothers. Oh, somebody just uh, help to arrange all the mothers. Can fit in,
Right, don't go away first. We have the announcement, then the closing song. Huh? <laughs> okay, well, uh, once again, uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming for our service. Once again, wishing all mothers a blessed Mother's Day. And uh, don't go away. I think uh, take a piece of the cake before you go away. Right, uh, we are still looking for position of the pastoral worker whom we call the evangelist. Uh, we, we need someone who is bilingual both in uh, Chinese and in English as well, do pray and uh, keep, keep that in matter. Anybody have anybody uh, in mind, just uh, let me know or let the church know. We will, uh, care, uh, we will follow up on that matter. Also, uh, keep that in mind, we need an uh, additional teacher for the kindergarten. Uh, yeah, the, the, also in the bulletin, please also uh, take note as well, okay? Right, I want to talk about the uh, revival, revival fire gathering uh, in uh, Penang, which is uh, by Reverend Franklin, okay, you held in St. George's Church, will be on Friday, there's a talk, and a pray, uh, talk has, uh, on the uh, 8 o'clock Friday, and on Saturday morning, 9.30 to 3, there is a workshop, workshop on prayer, healing, and deliverance, huh? in that man- manner, please uh, do go and support, this is the Arch Dictionary event, and uh, Reverend Franklin, uh, Reverend Franklin is appointed by Bishop to coordinate. Uh, we call this program the Anglican Revival Revival Fire, okay, Ministry Revival Fire. So the idea is to encourage to uh, uh, one another and bring up that uh, fire in each and every Anglican in the uh, diocese as well. So do come and join uh, the all day. Uh, Reverend Franklin is also the bishop chaplain. He's he is assisting Bishop in the ministry as well in, term, in terms that, uh, yeah, he's a chaplain for the Bishop, the Dyson Bishop. So uh, pray, pray for the event, pray for uh, Ren Franklin, and also uh, do support this event. Thank you. 